What I didn't know was how deep those roots went. Welcome back everybody to Church and State. It has been a minute since I last seen you in this format. I know I've been doing man on the street videos. We've had one video go viral and we're gonna continue with that. But I wanted to resume with this format because it's been a while, you know? I miss seeing you guys face to face. Real quick life update for those of you who don't know. I recently got engaged to my beautiful fiance in July and we're gonna be married next year. Such a blessing from the Lord. I'm so excited. She's everything I prayed for. Here's what we're going over today. In California, the state where I live, Gavin Newsom is proposing Proposition 1, which would enshrine abortion into the California Constitution. What that will do also is basically give the right to abortion up until the moment of birth. A woman can murder her child up until the moment of birth no questions asked and even 28 days after with AB 2223 that's what the language of the bill says with all that said I think it's important to take a deep dive into the influences that Margaret Sanger had around her and the interesting connection between Margaret Sanger eugenics and Hitler and the Third Reich. So before we begin, make sure you please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and then share this with a video with somebody who is pro-choice. It might open up their eyes. Let's dive right into this. Let's watch this clip together. This is Seth Gruber and Eric Metaxas. Seth Gruber is an abortion abolitionist, and Eric Metaxas is a well-known author and speaker. Let's check this out. It's gonna be really cool. Um, and so as I've been studying a lot of the long walk through the institutions, you know, you start learning the connections of these demonically inspired people, you know, so like Margaret Sanger, right, the patron saint of feminism with a bigger body count than Mao, Stalin, and Hitler combined, and yet she's... You guys hear that? Margaret Sanger has a bigger body count than Mao, Hitler, and Stalin combined. Let's go on. She's praised in the halls of Congress and Hillary Clinton gets an award named after her. Um, she, she had some of the most demonic people on her board and that she associated with. Well, when you um, say demonic, you're not using that word like metaphorically. Yes, you're I talking about correct. incredibly correct. dark figures who were part of the yeah. cultural elite of that era. Amen. So um, Leon Whitney was the executive secretary of the American Eugenics Society. He was a very good friend of Sanger. Now he was not on the board. This is important. Listen in. Not on the board of the American Birth Control League, Eric, but she, he was a very good friend of Sanger, a real ally, as was Madison Grant, one of the leaders of the American Eugenics Society. Margaret Sanger's Birth Control League shared freaking office spaces with the American Eugenics Society, and she tried to merge her organization on two different occasions with American eugenics groups. Okay, Leon Whitney once got a letter Again, this is like, they powder, these are best friends of Sanger. Leon Whitney gets a letter one day here from a, uh, a German corporal recently out of prison rising in the German political scene, uh, writing fan mail to Leon Whitney, thanking him for his writings on eugenics. Excuse me. Leon Whitney are you kidding? takes this letter, Eric, to his friend Madison Grant, who's also part of the American Eugenics Society. And Leon Whitney's really excited because he wants to brag, and this is all true, by the way, he wants to show Madison Grant this, he, he wants to Ladies say, and gentlemen, are you ready for, the, for say, the reveal who the corporal was? Madison Grant, look, we're influencing German leaders with our eugenics ideas. Madison Grant smiles and chuckles, Eric, and he pulls out his own letter he had also just received in the mail from the same German corporal recently out of prison, rising in the German political scene, call, calling Madison Grant's book, The Passing of the Great Race, his Bible. The man who wrote those letters was named Adolf Hitler. I always knew abortion was evil because, look, it's like that comedian Bill Barr said. It's not a baby yet. That would be like if I was making a cake and I poured some batter in a pan and I put it in the oven and then five minutes later you came by and you grabbed the pan, you threw it across the floor and I went, what the f He just ruined my birthday cake. And then you were like, well, that wasn't a cake yet. It's like, well, it would have been. If you didn't do what you just did, there would have been a cake in 50 minutes. Something happened to that cake, you cake murder and son of a- Look, abortion is evil. What I didn't know was how deep those roots went. Not only to Margaret Sanger and the eugenics society. Eugenics is basically, I'll simplify it for you. We gotta purify and sterilize the human race. We gotta sterilize those people that we don't want procreating anymore. 
Margaret Sanger was a racist, and so she actually wanted to sterilize black people, which is the whole point of abortion. And eugenics also perfects the human race. So anybody who has autism, anyone with a, a mental disorder, anybody with who is less than par physically, we don't want them. We want an elite race of people. That's what Margaret Sanger believed. When I say believe, I don't mean and believe in committing sin. Do you believe there is such a thing as a as sin? Well, I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world. The American Eugenic Society and Sanger paired up. Their writings, the Eugenic Society's writings, inspired Sanger, but it also inspired Adolf Hitler and his rise to power of the Aryan race and the Third Reich. This is what these ideas lead to. When you have people that do not matter in the womb, who are you to say that anyone else does not matter outside of the womb? Even though this is premiering on Tuesday and it's election day, I pray that Prop 1 did not pass. Because how we value the unborn, I have here. These are examples of first trimester babies, about nine weeks old. I think it's amazing because no one really knows what abortion is. Everyone's for, well, a woman's right to choose. We want this and want that. Do you even know what abortion is? Abortion is not some safe procedure. Abortion is not just taking tissue or cells out of you. It is the intentional stopping of the baby's life. In some instances, what happens is the baby is injected with a saline solution. And then what happens is a vacuum or a suction is inserted into the uterus in the first trimester and even second trimester. And that baby is suctioned apart. Literally suctioned apart. Then what happens, for those who are more further along, if the baby's too big to be suctioned, the baby's limbs are ripped off. The baby is injected with a solution, and then the abortionist goes in with clamps and clamps on to the hands and the arms and the feet and the legs, and then he pulls. He pulls so tightly that those actually come off the baby. And then he pulls the head. And then he goes in with a scalpel. And then he goes in and scrapes all the inside of the uterus, making sure he's gotten everything. This is the reality of abortion. This is the reality of do you matter? I think it's funny, those who would vote for a different side, vote for abortion on this. Listen to what this lady said on Dr. Phil. When does the other person get to choose? to live. There are two people involved in every abortion. There is the mother and then there is the child. And that's the problem with your position because it denies the humanity of that little person. Where do babies come from? We are debating about when life starts. We know that egg and sperm meet. There's an actual little spark of life that light that happens. They can't explain it, but that's when they meet. And the unique DNA that makes you who you are is formed at that moment. And that one single cell then grows into a clump of cells and continues to evolve and develop. And then we become less dependent. If we can kill something that is dependent upon us, why can't we kill college students? Why can't we kill the elderly? Why can't we kill a two-year-old baby? Because dependency does not define life. Dependency does not define life. The moment the egg and the sperm meet, you have a jolt of life. God forgive us. I hope I gave you something to think about and maybe even chewing on it a little more after this. Highly encourage you to go to check out Seth Gruber's podcast, Unaborted. Phenomenal podcast. And remember, you matter. And this abortion debate is really at the heart of church and state. Because at the heart of the church is that everybody is created in the image of God. And here you have the state saying, that's not true. And they're going against the Declaration of Independence that said all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What happens if we deny that to unborn babies? Do you even have that then? Or is the government able to come in and lock down your church and your business if you don't follow blank orders or blank mandates or blank mandates of these certain things that you should get in your arm? You see how it's a slippery slope this is? All right. 
Well, thank you for watching Church and State today. My name is Timothy Johnson for Red Liberty Media. Remember, you matter, and so do them.